Well, I want to be as much as I can. If it's a journalist, a poet, it doesn't matter. As long as it's somebody that is able to, I don't know, I guess what I would say is uh, have an effect on someone's life. A list of dreams. Hmm. Having the opportunity to, if nothing else, have a retrial to where my story can be told. The story I was being, I was cheated out of being told the first time. He was so different from uh, anything that anyone could imagine a death row inmate being. I mean, I knew he had grown up in very poor and difficult circumstances, but he had overcome all of that and really turned himself into a very different person. Does God want the death row? No, because. To kill someone, the first thing you have to do is teach them how to hate. And God doesn't want to hate. So. The death penalty is really just another form of human cruelty. When we look back at the past, we say to ourselves things like, how could people have ever done such a thing? You know, how could people have ever offered human sacrifice? And yet I think we're still offering human sacrifice. It's the opposite of civilization. It's barbarism. I think it's in each of us, if we're honest. And uh, we need to acknowledge it in order to overcome it. Dominique's mother was an extremely troubled human being who became, in the course of Dominique's childhood, an alcoholic, a drug addict. Her mother went through things it passed down to her. She, she went through things and, tried and passed it down to me. But I didn't pass it down. I was, I was the person that broke the cycle. Unfortunately, I couldn't break it quick enough because I found myself in this position. But I broke it because I raised two little boys, my two little brothers. And so far they got me, you know, they're successful to the point that I did good. The first question I'm always asked is, did he do it? And I don't think he did. I don't think he committed the murder. But I say over and over again, the first question should not be, did he do it? The first question should be, did he receive a fair trial? There were no blacks on Dominique's jury. Truly racist formulations were used in order to convict him and in order to get the jury to go along with the death sentence. Dominique Green was poor and black. If he had the money for representation to begin with, he would never have ended up on death row. There are no millionaires on death row, and there never will be, which doesn't mean that millionaires never commit capital crimes. It means that they have good lawyers. There is no good argument in favor of the death penalty. The states that have the death penalty also have much higher incidence of violence. Doesn't that mean that violence begets violence and that that's really the effect of executing people? And the other thing is that we know that approximately one out of eight of the prisoners that we execute is innocent. That's a pretty big mistake to be making. One out of eight. I know if you take the cost that they're, they're paying to kill me and invest it in my life, they could, I could have had a beautiful future. But instead, they don't invest in our lives. They, they invest in destroying it. The first time I met Dominique, he had just finished reading a book by Desmond Tutu about Tutu's presidency of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa. Dominique read this book and he passed it around to everybody on death row. and. The men on death row read the book and decided that they would forgive everybody who had hurt them and ask for forgiveness from everybody that they had hurt. And that's the kind of thing that Dominique in his last years did over and over again. Uh, he had an immensely positive effect on the men up and down death row. He had virtually no family and Dominique Green's mentors on death row said to him, you know, you really need a family. You might try writing to the Italians. The death penalty really bothers them. There's a community here in Rome called the Community of Sant'Egidio, 
They have a shelter for abused and abandoned children. They take care of poor people. They are involved in peace missions throughout the world. Dominique did send a letter to Italian newspapers and one of them printed it, as a result of which a young member of Sant'Egidio got in touch with Dominique. It was just this little correspondence that finally blossomed into this community's deciding to put some of its muscle behind a global moratorium on the death penalty. And more and more states have signed on to that moratorium. Every time a new state signs on, the Colosseum here in Rome is lit up in the night to commemorate this new signature. And in many ways, it was Dominique who was responsible for this moratorium movement. There are so many th things in this story, not just the death penalty, but the way in which our society refuses to take responsibility for children, I think is the worst of all. And secondly, our refusal to properly address the lives of prisoners. Fewer and fewer state prison operations permit anything like education. We keep a man in prison for years and then we put him back on the street again and he, he has nothing to bring back with him than what he went in with. Dominique was executed in 2004. He sure as hell didn't want to be buried in Texas. There is a graveyard on a hill outside the death house, and that hill stretches for miles. You can see nothing in any direction except headstones. And on those headstones is an X from executed, the prisoner's number, and the date of execution. No name. Who would want to be buried there? So Dominique's uh, remains were cremated and they were brought to Rome according to his instructions. His remains are kept in an alcove in the community of Sant'Egidio's shelter for abused and abandoned children. And if such a place had been available to Dominique as a child, he would never have ended up where he ended.